For as long as folks can remember, it's been a saying around these parts that if you want to find a little piece of paradise, you can get there two ways. You can follow the mighty majestic White River, or perhaps take a ride down the old Calico Rail. Each leads you to the same place. A little piece of paradise we call Calico Rock, Arkansas. You know, Calico Rock folks have been making history and preserving history for years and years. And these days, the local town folks take pride in their town like never before. Yeah, Calico Rock's got a lot to offer these days, but in order to find out where you're going, you've got to find out where you've been. And that's where our friend Gloria comes in to tell us all about what's going on in Calico Rock these days. Hi, I'm Gloria Gushu, Executive Director for the Calico Rock Museum. Welcome to Calico Rock. The museum started in, in almost five years ago as a nonprofit organization privately owned by seven different individuals. We have worked hard to establish a living history in Calico Rock. We've given you the illusion of being on the deck of the Ozark Queen, which was the last riverboat that docked here in 1903. This was a riverboat town starting in the 1800s up until 1903. At that time, the railroad took over. There are a lot of different things that you can see here. This is a living history. It is a combination partnership with the Calico Rock Artisan Cooperative. There are 28 different local people who hand make their items, bring them here for wear. The Calico Rock Museum and Artisan Cooperative, Cooperative is a partnership. The Artisan Cooperative helps to maintain the museum because it is a nonprofit organization. We have 28 different local vendors, anything from wood carvings, we've got um, quilting, candle making, uh, jewelry making, uh, different, a, a lot of different things that are happening, and all of them from the Ozarks. The inmates, when the building was first established, the building needed a lot of repair. The, the North Central Unit located in Calico Rock has a program where the inmates are permitted to come and do work for us as a 501c3 program. They did and started this building which was basically a shell and established all of what you see today. All of the railings, all of the windows have been redone and one of the inmates who worked on one of the programs decided that he wanted to donate something to the museum asking us if, the, if we wanted a ship's wheel, and he donated that, and that's what's in our captain's. Yeah, hi, my name is Rich Fisher. I'm the president of the Calico Rock Organization for Revitalization Efforts, or CORE as it's known here locally. CORE is a volunteer uh, group that uh, started about seven years ago of concerned and interested citizens that were trying to work toward improving the community, and uh, developing the downtown uh, area in particular. The downtown district uh, that we're now in is uh, approximately one, one block long and it consists of buildings that were constructed in the early 1900s. And uh, it is a historic district. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. And each of the buildings here along Main Street has got uh, historic signage in the windows that tell about the original owners and the original use. Some of the projects that CORE is involved in uh, down here, uh, one involves a uh, unique uh, solar-powered streetlight system, historic-looking uh, street lamps that resemble gas lamps uh, were erected, and they are all uh, powered by solar energy. There's a solar array uh, on the roof of one of the buildings that feeds the lights, uh, and it's kind of unique. About three years ago, we had an ice storm here, uh, and the town was actually out of power, the whole town, for three days. And it was kind of unique to come down here at night and see the town all dark, but the street lights were still shining uh, brightly as a result of the solar power. Uh, and CORE was involved in that project. Uh, the community really steps forward around here. Uh, the community had a chance to sponsor a street light for uh, $1,500 per light. I think we have a total of eight lights in the system, and we had more people step up to volunteer to sponsor those lights than we had lights. So that gives you an idea about the uh, commitment and the energy of this community. Uh, another project was the uh, mural that we have downtown that depicts some of the local uh, attractions. The river, of course, is a big draw here. Uh, the White River is probably one of the top three trout fishing rivers in the country. 
and we certainly uh, welcome and appreciate fishermen and uh, outdoorsmen who uh, take advantage of that. Um, so Calico Rock has quite a bit to offer. Uh, you've seen the museum and uh, we just encourage you all to come and visit and uh, as we say you can come and stay for a day an hour or a lifetime now calico rock arkansas has seen a lot of changes over the years but to hear bill terry tell it there's only one thing that calico rock's known for that's his great fishing some of the most beautiful bluffs in america are located along the shoreline and underneath those bluffs in the rocky waters below some of the best fishing known to mankind a day on the river with old charles and bill here and my kitchen mess of fish in no time at all. Let's hear from them. Uh, my name is Charles Wilson, and, I, and I'm out here today with Mr. Bill Terry, a local boat dock operator and expert on guiding the White River for rainbow trout. And we're here to talk to you a little bit about the White River in Calico Rock, Arkansas. The river is uh, flowing at probably two, two and a half mile an hour and a little dirty normally normally crystal clear but we've had some heavy rain and uh, so the river is dirty today uh, but uh, according to uh, field and stream best trout fishing in the nation in uh, field and stream uh, i think it was 2009 issue uh, but wonderful fishing and uh, a very very uh, beautiful attraction we have beautiful limestone bluffs and just just a great place to spend the day so back in 1818 a man named henry schoolcraft uh, floated the white river in a canoe he actually came down here looking for minerals he was a geologist by trade and uh, he wasn't the first white man here there were several uh, people from appalachia that had moved in here and were homesteading but he was the first one to document his travels and actually make a complete journal and in his journal, he stated that as he passed this area, that the color of the bluffs reminded him of calico cloth. And that's where Calico Rock got its name. It's normally, uh, uh, you can pick up a trout book, a uh, regulation book, and a trout book, which will have a stocking uh, schedule in it. Uh, and it'll show you basically how many rainbows are put in each year. Normally, it's around 2.1 million fish a year into the White River. Well, I was, I was born in Wisconsin, and uh, I loved to fish from, from a child. And uh, uh, my parents moved us to Southern Ohio, and I first went to Vietnam, and then uh, came back to the U.S. and became a structural iron worker, and uh, came up here for a visit uh, from Houston, Texas. And I just fell in love with the White River and uh, Arkansas area, which does remind you a little bit of Wisconsin. And, uh, but uh, yeah, I got here a roundabout way, but uh, what a place. Now, you've been here your whole life, right? yeah, I was born here, actually born at home in a little house just north of Calico Rock. And uh, my dad loved this river and I grew up on this river. I was on it and I was big enough to hold a rod and reel. My wife thinks I'm more married to this river than I am her. And I just can't get away from it and it's, uh, uh, kind of ironic that we came from two different sources, but both of us love this place equally well. Now the local folks in Calico Rock, Arkansas, and some of their new neighbors took it upon themselves to restore historic East Calico Rock. Why well, in the old days you might just catch a sight of old Greasy Slim walking out of the jail and walking around downtown, keeping that part of Calico Rock under his protection. Now this old fella knew every inch of East Calico Rock, and well, the locals keep him alive best they can. We didn't have to look hard to find him. We found him at the old jail. Oh, well, good morning. I didn't realize there's anybody out here. You have to kind of excuse my appearance. I just woke up and uh, the facilities in the jail aren't all that great. Oh, by the way, my name's Greasy Slim. Uh, tell you a little bit about how I got to Calico Rock. See, back in the 1940, I was riding the rails, just kind of looking the country over, and living as they would say, by my means. And uh, one of the things about riding rails was you had to watch out for them railroad bulls because if they caught you, they put you off the train. And I got put off the train here in Calico Rock. And uh, you know, the folks just treated me so good, I just stuck around. And after a while, I got to, to kind of help and clean the jail out and, and do different things around and helping the, the marshal. And uh, more folks treated me good. And when the marshal uh, 
decided he wasn't going to be the marshal anymore, they just let me kind of take over. Interesting, interesting thing about this jail, if you, if you kind of look at it, you know, it's not very comfortable in there. So there really didn't nobody want to stay in there. By the way, there's no heat in this jail, and there's no air conditioning in this jail. So whatever the weather was outside, it was just that much worse inside. And uh, so you didn't have a lot of guys that, were, that really wanted to spend any time in this particular little jail. Uh, I, I spent several years here in Calico Rock, and I just want to say this about the folks here in Calico Rock. You won't meet any nicer people that will treat you any better and give you this nice accommodation to sleep in when it's not occupied than the folks right around here. So we're going to take a little, little walk now up through East Calico and maybe cook and talk about some of the businesses that were here back in the 40s and 50s and even up into the 60s. All right, now we've moved a little further east in my area of protection. And we are now in front of what used to be uh, Martin's Barbershop and Beauty Shop and the Ozark Theater. Now you have to understand that in a town of Calico Rock Science, we had the Ozark Theater down here in East Calico, and that was the place to be on a Friday or Saturday night. You come down to the cafe and get your, uh, your dinner, and then you just walk right up the street to the Ozark Theater, and you can see Lash LaRue, or you could see, oh, maybe Roy Rogers. You know, all of them really, really fine characters from back in the 40s, 50s, even into the 60s. All right, now we've moved a little further up the hill, and uh, we want to talk just a little bit about the corner store here. Uh, there was, like I said a while ago, this, this East Calico was the main business district in its day and we had store, we had uh, wholesale grocery distributors, we had across the street over there two different petroleum distributors here. Coming up on the far side of the street there was one of the biggest flooring mills in this area when it was in operation. At one time they had a minimum of a million board feet of lumber drying at any one time. And, uh, Hayes Brothers Flooring, the name was known all over the country and, and probably a lot of area of the world. Headquartered right here in Calico Rock in East Calico. Uh, when you come up this way and you think about in, in the early, from 1902 when the railroad came in to up in the 60s and even early 70s, Calico Rock was the business hub for a large area around here. So when I say, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that I was actually be able to be a little bit of the law enforcement in this town and uh, to be a little bit of a part of the history of how this town grew and thrived during that time. So uh, we're gonna go down around the corner and talk about, believe it or not, Calico Rock had their own electrification plant. Now we've come up the hill in East Calico and the businesses along here, we'll start with the building down there with the red door. That was the funeral part. Beautiful building and, and recently has been purchased and partially restored. And uh, the gentleman actually used it now for storage, but that was the funeral part. Remember I mentioned down there a while ago that Calico Hot Rock had its own electrification plant? It was right there in that building right there, right behind us. And they had two diesel generators in there that supplied the power to Calico Rock. That was something for the farmers to come into town. And a lot of them were still coming into town in their wagons. And they'd stay in their wagons down here in East Calico waiting to get into the gin, especially it might take days for them to get into the cotton gin. And they had electric lights right here in Calico Rock. And then up the hill just a little bit, they had their own phone company. They had the Calico Rock Telephone Exchange. And it was run by mama and daughter. And there was always an operator on duty. Now it might take her a minute to get there because she might be taking a little nap, but she was on duty. And you could call your neighbor up any time of night or day through the Calico Rock Telephone Exchange. 
Now, we're just about done with our tour of Calico Rock, but when we get done talking, this guy behind the camera over here is going to go down and take some more pictures, and I want him to get a shot of the buildings of the Hayes Brothers flooring because that was an important part of East Calico. They employed more people in two different states than any other business around here. And they were in operation up until about 2000 before they finally shut down the flowing operation. As you can see, Calico Rock's about history, Calico Rock's about beauty, and Calico Rock is about a great place to live or visit. Come on down and see us. Capture a friendly Ozark smile and set a spell. You'll be glad you came to Calico Rock, Arkansas. Well, thank you for all of you for coming to Calico Rock. I hope you've enjoyed your visit. We hope you'll come back. If you've seen something you enjoy, come back and see us again. I'm Frederica Johns. I'm the director of the Pepper Sauce Players, and we've been a, a, a small theater group for about a year and a half. We do historical uh, events, and uh, that's uh, something you can come to see us in Calico Rock and enjoy. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the museum, uh, all of the beauty around Calico Rock that you see behind me. And if you come to visit us, I will promise you that we will have all of this beauty. We will not let it go. It will stay here for you. And if you're real good, real good, we'll let you come and sit on our front porch and enjoy this beauty.